Normal people become terrified of criminals. Shots were just fired. Police just came out and told us, and we're headed there right now. They become terrified of their own government. I chose the best source I could, out.com, and they've titled it, This trailer for a, quote, comedy film about trans athletes is the worst thing we've ever seen. Oh, uh, what, I praise. What, what, yeah. Jeremy, what praise. do you have to say for yourself? Well, I'm looking up the article now. <laughs> <laughs> so it says... Um, I, I chose this one because, of course, we have to go for the criticism. It's a well-known fact that right-wingers cannot make good art and don't have a sense of humor. At the same time, I just want to get the pause. Uh, Y'all call Joe Rogan right-wing, and he is one of the top comedians of all time. So mm -hmm. nice try, but let's read. They say the Daily Wire is reminding us all with the new preview for its first feature-length comedy, uh, comedy, Lady Ballers, in a world where women's sports is being transformed, the Daily Wire calls foul with the most triggering comedy of the year. So, of course, uh, they're they're uh, absolutely triggered by it. But in real news, we have this story from uh, Daily Wire. So you just went on Patrick Bet David's show, and the headline is, Jeremy Boring says theaters won't touch lady ballers because Hollywood has made transgenderism its religion. Yeah. But uh, the, the, just, just to get the whole thing going, you put out a new trailer, Yep. It's about guys who find a path towards making money by identifying as women, but why don't why don't you take it away? Yeah, I mean, it's all in the name, right? Lady Ballers. Uh, here, here, I'm going to read this from Out, though, because it, it sets it up well. It says, the premise of Lady Ballers seems to be that any out-of-shape 50-year-old white man is by nature of being a man, a better athlete than any woman could ever hope to be. You see, women are just factually bad at sports, this movie states. First of all... What? Nobody involved in the movie is uh, 50. <laughs> Se second of all, uh, we do not state that women are factually bad at sports. We state that women are factually worse at sports than men. It's science. It is. <laughs> it well, is true. It is truly science. Don't you trust the science? Men. Sometimes. Men are stronger and faster than women. And this is why. Full e stop. Even the left can't. They can't even acknowledge that basic fundamental reality. Since they can't acknowledge that basic fundamental reality, they can't understand why we have any of the opinions that we have. They're not allowed to know that it's true, and so they don't know that it's true. Well, but then it's, I, would, it's, I would ask, why then do they have testosterone limits? Why do they have that standard for... Mm -hmm. So the reality is because they do know, they're just lying. That's right. Of well, and we are. see it across the country. We see in Maine and in California just recently, there were male athletes competing in women's um, you know, cross country events, and they were taking home all the awards for sure. And that's going to keep happening. The average high school boy involved in track runs faster than world record Olympian women. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, we saw the, the, the women's average. U.S. soccer team was beaten by a like high school, high school team. Yeah. 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 When when uh, we, I was talking about this uh, article that said prehistoric women were better hunters. And it's uh, the argument was that because of and it's 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 all nonsense. It's like wow. because because of uh, um, women have have uh, they carry more body fat, they have more energy for endurance. That that actually creates drag and more weight. And so I was like, I can debunk this very simply. I think actually your debunking was better. They were pregnant, they were nursing children, so they're not out hunting. But there's, I just said, okay, I pulled up marathon time and distance, and sure yep. enough, men beat women in all of it. Well, let me just. Here's a little uh, mental exercise for you. Uh, a, a riddle, if you will. Why do we even have women's sports? Because sometimes people wear dresses. <laughs> <laughs> Answered a riddle with a riddle. We, we have women's sports because if you didn't have women's sports, women would never win at any sports. <laughs> but the, the, the whole purpose of creating women's sports a, as a category was so that there was a place where women could excel. Well, and that's but what Title is, IX was all about. That's right. right. But, and but, now that's been completely destroyed. And the left, left wing, the leftist argument is we have women's sports because sometimes people wear dresses. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I mean, but that, that's seriously it. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, that's right. The, and and that's, uh, that looks like the premise of your movie where these guys are like, wait, I can identify as a woman, plan the team, and then identify as a man later. Yep, gender fluid. Yep. The you story know, is actually based sometimes on, you wear a dress, sometimes you don't. Jeremy's right. movie is based on Zuby. The yeah, movie. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a thing recently. There was a a a, a trans um, identified male murdered a trans identified female in Norway. Just gave me a headache. I know Thanks. it really happens. My goodness. But the Norwegian the Norwegian um, papers reported this as woman kills man. Oh, but yeah. really, it's just your typical man kills woman, <laughs> just like we see all inverted, over Libby. the place. Yeah, it's crazy. You I, know? 
This is why I can't stand. I think I, I'm not sure if Fox News does this. I think they may use preferred pronouns or or presumed pronouns. I think is the important distinction. Presumed pronouns are when these media organizations will use atypical pronouns without actually knowing preferred pronouns. So, for instance, uh, the, the Daily Mail does this all the time. If there is a person that is, that is presumed to be trans, they will use the inverse pronouns, even though they don't actually know if that mm -hmm. person uses the pronouns they're trying to, because of like UK hate speech laws yeah. or something like when this. When I was still a professor teaching journalism, fiction, all that stuff, the style guide changed and they mm -hmm. wanted black to be capitalized, but white to be lowercase. So there's these little insidious ways that they're right. putting, they're changing literal language. I refuse to do that. Oh, I'll never do that. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. It's really stupid. It's, it's, it's insane. Yeah, it's, it's so bad crazy. enough that we have to yeah. capitalize Hispanic, which means person from South America who speaks Spanish. Yep. Does it? I don't even know if it means from South America, does it? Well, it doesn't mean Spain. It, no, it means speak Spanish, doesn't it? I thought it meant I thought it just meant Central someone South who America, Spanish. but well, not maybe. Spain. Then I guess Brazil is out of that, huh? Brazil <laughs> is not in that. And yeah. that's what sort of shows the whole lie right there. Right. That well, makes it just absurd. absurd. Wow. Yep. Here's a line from this out <laughs> article about us. It says, I love how much you love this article. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's, here's the thing if you're gonna win an election if, if if like you're way up in the polls you always watch msnbc mm -hmm. right yes. it's much yeah. it's much more fun to read what they say about us than what we say about us but i like this it's not clear if director and star jeremy boring has ever written or acted before i mean it is clear if you could google in the time you did this uh, or if he has ever met a woman in real life and the answer is i guess i don't know based on whatever descriptor they might use for the how do, how do they define it? How do they yeah. define it? Holy moly. I love this it. This is fun. I, yeah. You should frame this. So, so I just looked it up and uh, Hispanic is a Spanish speaking person living in the U.S. Living in the U.S.? <sighs> Comma, especially one of Latin American descent. So you're, you're, you're correct. I'm but close. The, the general close, concept right? is if you, if you it, like Jeremy, if you learn Spanish right now, you're Hispanic. Yeah. That's wow. weird. I don't quite understand. But uh, I guess realistically, uh, you know, there's also a joke in the trailer about um, trans age. Yeah, where but this is oh, yeah. trans age was attempted in a lawsuit. Um, I think it was a professor who did it as a an attack on that on the, the concept of identity. Mm. It may have, may, have, may have been in Europe as well, saying I actually identify as thirty when they were fifty nine or something. In the courts, well, said, there's that off. British guy who wears diapers and says he identifies as uh, Stefani, like a five year old right. girl or something. Is he the guy who films himself in public? I don't know, but mm. he was adopted by um, other grown ups who let him play with their daughter. Yeah. <laughs> which is nasty absolutely, well, like, absolutely not in, i'd love in, to see you shane ugh, listen <laughs> in new york new york city g gender identity is a protected category which includes gender expression and gender expression is legally defined as self-expression so hmm. I, I i i went over this in 2018 quite literally you the clothing you wear the name you use you cannot be discriminated against so that this this means everything you could you could show up in stilts and clown makeup and they can't tell you're not allowed to wear it. You, it's it's a, it's against my gender identity. I wear these clothes. Yeah, it would be right. discriminatory. Now New York is saying, I don't know if you saw this, weight and height. You can't discriminate on the basis of weight. Yep. Mm -hmm. No discrimination so, against fat people. So, yep. but what, was what if someone can't yeah. fit? So here, think about this. Someone goes to a movie theater in New York and they're 300 pounds and they say, I can't fit in these chairs. Well, now you're discriminating because you're not providing an accommodation right. to large people. Didn't the firemen in New York change the weight requirements years back too? Yeah, and cops, all kinds or of maybe stuff. Maybe not just in New York, but I was yeah. in New York at the time when I saw it. It's uh, yeah, it's it's insane. Yeah, I don't get it. But here's the thing: we have to mock these ideas. I agree. What what brought us to make Lady Ballers is one understanding the power of mockery, and and two, honestly, something that Joe Rogan said about a year ago, a, a little over a year ago. So he had he had a guest on his show, and he said, you know, nobody. He talks about this a lot. Nope, Hollywood won't make comedies anymore. And it's absolutely true. Barack Obama destroyed rock and roll and he destroyed comedy and he destroyed America. Other than those three things, great president. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also killed American citizens without charge or trial. Let's uh yeah. nice. But he, yeah. he made it impossible for us to tell jokes. Yeah. And that's it's why true. from the nineties and the early two thousands you had great comedies being produced by Hollywood. You haven't had one since Tropic Thunder. Because you're not allowed to make any jokes. True. So yeah, what is the? Is, oh, go ahead. Are, are there any recent comedies? I mean, no, I, I, they're not funny. You can't make a comedy. Yeah. No, really. And so I wanted to use comedy and, and mockery. Rogan talks about it all the time, and he said to a guest a little over a year ago, he said nobody can make a comedy now. He said if if anybody was going to do it, it'd have to be one of these conservative streamers like the Daily Wire. <laughs> and when he said it, yes, people send you that. What Joe Rogan mentioned the Daily Wire, you know, they send it to you. 
but it really struck me. And I thought, this this is kind of a, a challenge and a responsibility. If it is true that only the Daily Wire could do this, then it stands to reason that the Daily Wire must do it. If we actually believe the things that we purport to believe, and we actually are uniquely capable of challenging this new status quo, wherein you're not allowed to make fun of anything, including the most absurd things that are happening in our yeah. culture, yep. then, or just we, then we just have to do it. Just just anything. I mean, uh, uh, over the holiday weekend, I'm, I'm hanging out with Seamus and my girlfriend, and uh, it's after Thanksgiving. So, you know, Seamus is from Chicago as well. And we were we were all making jokes about our backgrounds. Mm. The, 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 the issue of family, family history comes up. And then we make jokes. Seamus started. Seamus makes jokes about being Irish and being the potato man and stuff. And we play along with it. And he laughs. And then we make jokes about Korea. And we're all laughing at each other. And the left would call them racist jokes. Yep. I would just call it me and my friends having a good time with each other and laughing. Well, mm -hmm. I'll tell you this. In the 90s, we could still make those jokes. They were good jokes. They were good jokes. And there was far, far less racial division in the country. Yeah. I remember, mm -hmm. yeah, that was very distinct. And com coming up into the 2000s, and you're looking back at the 90s going, we were colorblind, we were friends with everybody, none of it was a very big deal. And I remember um, distinctly, probably something like 2012, running into an old friend of mine from college, a black woman, we were hanging out at this bar in Brooklyn, and we were just chatting, and she said something that was totally different than what she thought mm. when we were in college. She said that when people see her, she wants them to see her blackness first. She wants them to see her race oh, yeah. first. And I was like, but but why? Like, that's not what I see when I look at you. And the switch was that now it was racist to not notice race. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Whereas previously, totally. none of us had cared at all. Cult indoctrination. You know? Yep. Cult and we're from similar backgrounds, you know, similar schools, all of that. We went to the same, you know, private college, everything. Watching, well, watching them destroy comedy, though, with their ideology was so hurtful for me because comedy is one of my favorite art forms, you know, mm -hmm. yep. for two reasons. It brings people together. We can make fun of each other. I love Kill Tony. It's one of my favorite shows. They roast the heck out of each Same other. Bro. They're brutal. I love that. I do that with my friends. But also like Mel Brooks used to say, comedy mocking people could destroy your enemies. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what he would do in his, right, some like, of his look movies. at Rickles, like right. suddenly you're friends with everybody. Exactly. Well, let's 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 uh, actually I'd like to ask you directly about the film. And what can you say about it? I mean, I don't, I don't know if you want to reveal the plot or break down the, the general premise. Yep. What's going on? Yeah, I'll say more about it than is, is present in the trailer, which is that, of course, we start our journey by trying to become successful, by trying to get back in the game. We're, we're this, you know, I'm a coach and I get together my former state winning boys basketball team and say, hey, if we call ourselves women, we can get back into the game. Pretty soon we realize we're, we're being driven to this by my new girlfriend who is a a journalist and, and she has very <laughs> ulterior motives, you know. And but she's, she's excited for it? She, well, yeah, she's driving it. She's like, here's what we're going to do. Uh -huh. Think of the sponsorships. Think of the fame. <laughs> and, she, and she gets the exclusive. And and I'm learning. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing all these ideas about the trans movement from my eight-year-old daughter because she goes to public school and then I pick her up from school every day and she tells me things like gender fluidity and pansexuality and all this stuff. And She educates you. She educates me, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 as they do. As mm -hmm. you do, yeah. But pretty soon we we realized that it's not just basketball. I mean, we my guys could literally win at every sport. I mean, there's a really funny line where <laughs> where I'm like, hey, to one of the guys, like, hey, you want to hang out later? And he's like, nah, I gotta learn how to do a backhand so I can qualify for the uh, women's Olympic. Tennis. <laughs> 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 Although, in fairness, we don't use the term Olympic because you may not know this. You do not have free speech in this country where the word Olympic is what? concerned. Really? Is it like what? happy That's why I say global games. Yeah, it's the global games. You cannot use the term Olympics by law in this what? country. An actual statute really? in the United States legal uh, legal code. Why? Some uh, stupid I'm running for reason. Now. Yeah, you got to run for president. We need an ridiculous. executive order. Uh, wow. When did you realize that in the process, though? Like when you were very your late, Very late in the process, <laughs> uh -oh. yeah. Uh, unfortunately. And anyway, all of this to say... And this brings it full circle to what, to what got me on the topic of promoting my own beautiful movie, is that at, at, toward the end of the movie, I have to make a case for why, even though men are better at virtually everything, now that's a joke, but everything in this case is sports, you know, why would someone who is a female want to continue being a female? Would they not aspire to be a man? And it was challenging to come up with a list of things to say in a serious moment of the film that women are good at, that people wouldn't roll their eyes at. And then I, because the things that women are good at are things that our culture has decided 
don't have high value. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.